Hey there. I'm shooting this on the 3rd of November, and yesterday it was Fountain Pen Day. And so I, um, I was in Amsterdam, I happened to be there, and I just had to enter Akamon, you know, Fountain Pen Shop there. And, you know, it being Fountain Pen Day and all, of course I couldn't just walk out without a pen. So, I bought something that I was eyeing for quite a while. I paid a little more than I would have paid online. Maybe this is a good moment to actually talk about that for just a, a second. Um, I get a lot of questions, especially from people starting out with buying fountain pens, and they say, "Does it, do you have to buy stuff and try it out first? Can you just securely you know, buy stuff online and then it, it will all work out? Well, that's a difficult question, because a pen is something you use, and it has to work for you. The nib width has to you has to work for you. The feel of the pen, it can be too narrow, it can be too fat. Uh, the, the, I, I, I'm not just talking about the nib, I'm, I'm talking about the pen itself. You may not enjoy, it may look cool, but then, you know, they use fantastic photography on, on online shop uh, websites. And when you see the pen, you think, well, this is it. Uh, I remember once buying a Carandash Dunant Metallic, which was a limited edition, not really expensive, just a limited edition, which was called Metallic. And then it looked great on the pictures, and when I bought it, it turned out to be made of plastic. And I... It's a nice pen. It is one of the smoother nibs I own. I mean, that's not the problem, but in the picture it looked like it was metal. So you can be disappointed a bit when you buy stuff online. So when you're buying your very first pen, I would really recommend going to a shop and trying it out. Because you have to find out which nib width works for you. Do you need extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, oblique, italic, whatever. They're unlikely to have obliques and italics, obliques and italics a lot. But at least they will have fine nibs and medium nibs. And you just have to try that out a bit and, and see what happens. Um, you, you want to figure out whether you, you would like a heavy pen or a lighter pen. So, you know... I think a lot of it, a lot is to be said for actually going to a shop and, and trying out pens. Having said that, I buy most of my pens online. And I roughly know what I'm looking for, so I, you know. I know of one person who actually goes to pen shows to try out a lot of pens, not buy anything, and then buying stuff online that he has tried out. So that's, that's one way to do it, I guess. Okay. Enough gibberish. Uh, I was at Akamon and I, um, oh yeah. I saw a pen that I was, I'd been eyeing for a long time, and when I say a long time, I mean more than a year. And every time I thought, shall I buy one? And there was always some reason not to. And now I saw it here, and I thought, okay, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what happens. Visconti pen. You know I like Visconti. Who doesn't? One of my friends actually once said, I hate Visconti. And I said, really? He said, yeah, the pens are too cool. And it's, that's just what it is. So, nice boxes they have, really cool, this is uh, fake leather. Open it up, you get a little card for the My Pen system. <clears throat> so, on top of the cap there's a, a little magnet, and it just has the Visconti logo when you buy the pen, but you can put your initials on there, whatever, you, you have to buy that separately, but that's what this, this card is for. In here is the Visconti, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, whatever you like to call that. I'll take that out, I'll show you that in a second. But first, I open the drawer. With a lot of these Visconti boxes for the more expensive pens, you get the drawer. And in the drawer is some stuff. Here we have... Impregnate cloth for the cleaning of the bronze. Cleans, shiny, and it protects. Instructions. I think I already discussed this at some other pen review. Instructions. It cleans and shiny metal bronze parts of the pen, eliminating the dirty it formed on the surface of the metal. Yeah, I won't actually continue with this, but bronze. Okay, then we have a little booklet. The Writing Renaissance. And this is a pretty decent booklet. 
For twenty years, the name Visconti has been synonymous of extraordinarily elegant writing instruments coming from very intense historical and technological research, etc. Clearly, this is a bit of a promotion stuff for Visconti, but, you know, I, I just... Here we have Morgan Freeman with a Visconti pen, and I see Clint Eastwood, and uh, that all looks pretty cool. We got Oprah Winfrey. Uh, we got them all. We got some lady in a black dress, which looks very interesting. Oh, we have Barack Obama. So, I mean, a lot of people, we even have George W. Bush using this pen. Um, eye candy, very nice. Very thick paper, very glossy paper. Looks, looks beautiful. I mean, clearly good product photography. Trying to make you buy more pens. Ah, here we have the Opera Elements, my favorite Visconti pen of all time. I got it in red. Beautiful pen, fantastic nib. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all very nice. Um, great. Anything else in there? No. No, that's it. On to the pen. Um, as far as I know, you can buy this pen in two finishes. There is a blue version. Dark blue with palladium uh, highlights. And there is a black version with rose bronze. I didn't know there was such a thing, but apparently it's rose bronze highlights. And that's the one I got. And I think it looks gorgeous. I don't think I've ever seen an ugly Visconti pen, but it's, it's you know, this stuff is really, really cool. So, I'll cover the pasta pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. We'll start with the cap. Um, one thing that's interesting is that I'm, I'm not sure whether you can see it. Maybe you can see it a little bit in the way it reflects the light, but this pen has 36 facets, like a diamond. Um, start with the cap. So on top of it here, you have this, the, the, the my pen system I, I told you about. Of course, I can't take it off. I do actually have a magnet here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't. Oh, bloody hell, it actually works. A demonstration that works, how amazing. So here you've got this little metal plate. You see that? Just the Visconti logo, and here's just a little magnet. I'll put it back on there before I lose it, which would be something I'd actually do. Um, so you can put on your initials, you can put on star signs, I think you can even put on some gemstones and stuff. So it's 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 fairly cool. Then we have the clip. So all of this is this this rose bronze. Just to give you a bit of a taste of the color, it's I think it's it's pretty cool. Um, it has Visconti on there. It has this this arched uh, shape of the Visconti clips. As all Visconti clips, it is spring loaded. Very nice feature. Um, when I saw this, the back of the cap, I thought that would actually move when you would you know operate the the clip like this, but in fact it doesn't. So it's it it's just it just remains in place. Okay, then we have the center band, which is again that rose bronze. It says Michelangelo on one end and Visconti on the other end, and it has the, the Visconti V's on there. And we have the barrel, and we have a little bit of rose bronze at the very end of the barrel. And the barrel too is 36 facets. Faceted has 36 facets. There are many facets to this pen. <laughs> Uh, well, um, the cap, the lady in the shop, was screwing, nothing happened, was sort of pulling, nothing happened. No, it's a magnetic closure. So you pull it off, it's a magnet. Do we still have that magnet there? Yep. There we go. Magnet in the middle of the cap, and that is not the, the clip, that's really something in there. Um, And in there, I guess. Okay, so they have it. The cap, the pen, rose bronze nib in medium. I first tried the uh, the fine, uh, and I, I you know I don't really like fines. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but I, I still prefer something broader. So they found a medium nib. Visconti 14K 585 Firenze and M for medium. Uh, fleur de lis on there, all kinds of nice stuff, and I like the color. Here we have the section, smooth but not slippery. Again, that rose bronze color. Um, it has a lip right there, which is actually fairly pleasant. It gives you a type of you know grip purchase on the um, 
the section, flush with the barrel, and then we have the facet start there. So the, the section is not faceted. And I think that's not a bad thing. When I'm holding the I'm just holding the barrel to see how what that would feel like. Yeah, it's not bad, but I think a round section is, is nice, at least for me. It's not a piston filler. It's a cartridge converter pen. Um, a regular regular converter. Some Visconti converters screw in, this one's just a, a push-in converter, but you know, gets the job done. I always find that these Visconti uh, uh, converters hold a lot of ink, which is good because most of these pens are very wet. Okay, Let's screw that back in place. A very satisfying click when the magnet actually... nice. So, what do I like about the pen? Well, it's Visconti, and um, that's pretty much all there's to it. I, I, you know, one thing I would probably enjoy is if that magnet, the magnet would also work the other way around, so if I could actually use it for posting. I can post the pen, and it's pretty securely, but if there would be some type of magnet, or a bit of, I don't know, iron in the barrel, and it would click in place in this end, I think that would be awesome because it doesn't seem to be the case right now. Um, it's a decently shaped sized pen, as you can see. It's it's on the big side as most Visconti's are. Uh, even when unposted, you can use it fairly pleasantly. I think it's a beautiful pen. I just love the shiny black and the rose-colored bronze. I think it's fantastic, and I love it. And there's really nothing about the looks of the pen that I don't really like. Um, writing performance is good. The nib is good. It's smooth. It's a little springy. Not as springy as some other Visconti nibs I own, but it's definitely springy. It's just a good pen. So, I've been talking for a long time. I think it's best if I just show you a writing sample. So that's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful. And um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Visconti Michelangelo. The nib is medium. The ink is Oyster Grey by Mont Blanc. I like this grey. I think it's a very fascinating, legible ink. Okay, a bit of writing. The quick brown fox jumps over the... well, never mind. I'm not sure whether I fully agree here, but I just needed another artist, roughly same period of time. Um, writing is, you know, this is a Visconti pen, so that, that kind of sums it up. If you've never used one, I can tell you this is very smooth, very little resistance. I used this pen with the fine nib in the shop, and... Um, uh, you know I'm not a fan of fine nibs, if, you, if you've seen more of my videos. Actually, that nib wasn't bad at all. But I just asked whether it had anything a bit broader, and they came up with a medium nib. Um, I don't think they had a broad nib, but that's okay. This is already, well, a pretty fat medium. Visconti nibs, I, I think, are on the broad side of the spectrum. But even the fine nib was not particularly scratchy. So that's, that's you know, it's a very nice, nice thing. Let's do some fast writing, see how that works out. I don't see any skipping. It remains smooth. I 
love it. Great nib. What about its flexibility? Usually these gold Visconti nibs offer a bit of flex. Same goes for their palladium nibs. Not, I mean, it's not, it's a, it's not a flex nib, but at least they have some above average springiness, I would say. So let's see. No pressure, and then we add pressure. Even when flexing, it remains very smooth, really pleasant to the touch. Great. And it gives a bit of line variation. You see how it really brings out the shading of the ink, uh, with the darker bits and the lighter bits. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, a little bit of colouring to see how uh, wet the nib is. I have never in my life seen a dry Visconti nib. They're always on the wet side of things, where I have to say I, I really like my pens like that, so for me that's no problem. That bit is pretty much dry. That bit is definitely wet. It's not a it's not a gusher. I would say my Opera Elements by the same brand is a gusher. That that lays down such a wet patch of ink. It's it's you know. But this this is it's not dry, but it's not the wettest pen I've ever used. It's just a well good flow I'd say. Okay, well that seems to cover it all. Um, nice pen. I'm happy I got it. I hope this was useful. And um, I'll see you later. Bye bye.